Yes, everybody, we got six, seven, eight, mate in the building. Here he is, my man, mate. Thank you so much for the bars. It was sick. Yeah, third time clapping today. Third time. Do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy yourself? Yeah, so far, so good. It was definitely, yeah, it was an experience. As I said, it's the um, first time I've like rapped. Like a, well, I've rapped with cameras, but first time I've like rapped on a mic nice. with the camera, I just writing my grill in it. So well, that's good. So we, we got like kind of an exclusive look at yeah, six, man. seven, eight, you eight. Got, eight you, got, you can say you've done it first. Yeah, totally. Also, I'm feeling a little bit weird, mate. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you why I'm feeling a bit weird is I'm usually in that seat. <laughs> you came in and we walked in, yeah? Walked in, Nate just went straight on the seat. And I was like, are you usually sitting in that seat, mate? Well, I did, I, did say, I did say if you wanted it, but... You did you did offer, you did offer, but I, I just couldn't do it. So we're mixing things up today. There you go, exactly. Called shotgun. Also, you definitely called shotgun. Also, you're the first guy to bring like a whole group of people. You brought a man then with yeah, you. They, they came, you know, so everywhere I go, they got to they got come with, so... I need I need some encouragement. They exactly. Got, they've got experience the uh, the train journeys. Really they got well. experience the train journeys. So, yeah. No, totally. So why is your name six seven eight name? Um. So basically, it's a funny thing you asked that. So when I was gonna start music and whatnot, um, I kind of like had a conversation with myself, and I was like, well, what am I gonna call myself? Because mm. before I got born again, I was doing music, um, and my name was like Abs Youngbuck. So it was kind of like, I didn't want to use that name again because that was done now and it's a new chapter. But then it was like, it was either something like Prophet Nave or Minister Nave yeah. or something, just not silly, yeah. if that's what you want to call yourself. But for me, it's silly because I'm like, it's just religious, isn't it? So I remember talking to one of my brothers, TJ, and he was like, just whatever you do, don't like call yourself Prophet this or like Minister <laughs> that. Innit? So obviously because of the rugby, um, the positions I play is six, seven or eight. Mm. Um, and my name's Nath in the world, my name's Nathan. So I was just like, well, everyone in the rugby world kind of does it where they will have like, I don't know, say, Jack 11 or mm. Niall Saunders 10. I'm just giving a shout out to I was just about to say, is that real people? Yeah, you just well, Jack, I don't know, I don't know, Jack. Niall Saunders Jack. is my guy, Saucy Saunders. Um, and then, yeah, so you have like your, your, your number or your digits or whatever by your name. So I just thought I already had like a, a core following of people mm. who knew I was a 678 name. And it's like, it's my own space, isn't it? Yeah. So if you type in 678 Nath anywhere, there isn't no other 678 Nath. It's just it. me. So my music is, you can find it everywhere. Man. No, it's nice, nice, nice. So, sick. So those bars that you were sharing before, like what, what were they about? What were those bars? Um, so obviously with like my rugby history, um, I, I've, I've taken a lot of setbacks. Well, I mean, in life, innit? But mm. if I was to tailor it specifically to me, um, just taking a lot of setbacks in regards to injuries, getting knocked down, um, and basically it was just about me putting my thoughts onto paper and just saying, look, like, people go ahead. So, I mean, I was playing for, like, Quinns. I was doing, like, like playing at a high level and whatnot, and I was getting injured. But a lot of people have, like, not say surpassed me, but, like, have gone further than me. Um, and it's the same with, like, anyone. It can be your workplace. People might go ahead of you. People might get a, a head start um, in life and whatnot. And it was kind of, like, them, them lot went ahead, but they think that they left me back, like, well, back. Like, it's not about who's ahead it's about who can hack the setback. So mm. it's about the person that can be in the in the mud and work their way out and mm. get hit back and stay strong and go again and go again. So it's kind of like that, the tortoise and the hare kind of story, isn't it? It's, yeah, nice. it's, not, it's not just gunning it, gunning it, and then chilling, it's slow and steady wins the race. Nice, sick. Um, and yeah. Sick, man. So you're, you're a Christian artist, right? You call yourself a gospel artist. Yeah. Um, obviously you're a Christian. How did you get to the point, like what was your journey of becoming a Christian? Um, so I'll say the journey of becoming a Christian is I've always, I've always been religious. Yeah. Let's say, I'm going to say I'm Christian. Like, I grew up in a Christian household. Yeah. With Christian, like, um, morals yeah. and all of that stuff. So like you went to church on a Sunday. Yeah, thing. basically yeah, I went to church yeah. on a Sunday and I kind of like believed, but I wasn't like a, I wasn't living what I believed, didn't it? I was yeah, just, yeah. I was a talker. Um, and basically like my mum was like super Christian like she's like super Christian she's as, as Christian as they come she's like the what is it is it, is it is the Red Ranger the highest ranger Red Ranger yeah I think yeah. he's like the boss you talk yeah, about man. Power Rangers yeah, Power mate Ranger. the Red Ranger was the top yeah, ranger and she's yeah, like yeah. the flipping Red Ranger of the Christian society <laughs> she, like, she used to run it and now I hope she sees this well, and tells you off for she saying probably, that she probably won't she probably, she, she probably won't even know what I'm talking about she's like, what did you say I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, don't worry about it mom. 
Um, and then, yeah, so she used to like wake me up, bro, mad early, just I'll uh, pretend to be sleeping. She just pour water in my face, make me wake up to go to church and stuff. And mm. So she kind of like tried to install certain things. So certain like morals were in me, she mm. installed them. I might not have followed them completely, but they stuck with me when I got into yeah. certain situations and how I fought and how, you know, how I was. And um, one of my friends, because I was, I, I was in, I, I got reminded in, in custody when I was young. So I went to jail, came out, um, went back in, came out. And then when I got, when I came out the second time, they put me in a care home in Croydon. Mm. And one of the guys that I met there, he went to jail for like three and a half years or yeah. three years or something, or maybe yeah. longer, I don't know. But when he came out, we, we met up and we kind of went to the O2 Arena. And um, it's weird because, so this church that I'm currently at now, CRC London, we um, we were based in the O2 Arena. So we mm. had like the, the premier cinema screen, like it was like 500 right. capacity or whatever. And um, we just, we snuck into the cinema to watch a film. And then on our way out, we're like, we saw just commotion and everything yeah, going on. Yeah. So we're like, this, this see what's, you know what I'm saying, what's going on in there. So we started like just strolling, going in there thinking we're getting one over them, not there, like God was pulling us in. And then um, we got in there, turned out it was a church and um, sat there for like 20 minutes. He's like, come, 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 come. let's go to a business festival. I'm like, cool, got up. And then as we're walking out, the guy that I live with now, AB, um, he, they just had like a, like a newborn baby, Jonah, like my little brothers. And then um, he just came and spoke to us, and he was like, "Listen, da 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 da." da. But the weird thing is, a few weeks before that, some random guy tried to talk to me about about Jesus. Yeah. And I was like, "But like, I was like, like what the heck?" Like, but not even like it was like a it was like a white guy. Right. So I'm like, "Go away, bro. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to hear that." So now there's another white guy talking to me about it, but I'm just so much more receptive to him. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And we just started talking and all you mentioned was food. I was like, come get food right away. I said, yeah, cool. All right. So we came, got food. And then he invited us back to church. I went to church and I just sat there and um, I can't explain it, but it's, it's something you, can, you have to feel in it. You've got to experience it yourself. And I just felt God heard God talking to me, whatever. Um, pastor spoke and was like, do you know what? If you want to give your life to Christ and you want to have a relationship, you're not in right standing, blah, 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 blah. And I was afraid, bro. I was scared. Like I didn't, I didn't know what I was feeling or experiencing. Yeah. Um, and he just said, "Do you know how I'm talking to you?" And in my head, I was like, "How?" He's like, "Because you're right there, you're in your, you're, you're battling in your mind, saying, should I, should I not?'" And he's like, "You know, you want to." And I'm like, "That is me." So I just went to the front and I just gunned it to the front. <laughs> like crying my eyes out. And you're a rugby guy as well, so I'm like, is it yeah. hard for you like that crying thing? Bro, was hard it for was you? like I was like I was fighting. Him. <laughs> uh, so, so I was like just pouring my eyes out, and then um, yeah, man, that was the first time I gave my life to Christ. I was 16 years old, um, and then yeah, but I'll never look back ever since. Mad journey, man. For sure. Mad journey. For sure. So if you had any advice for people around that same age, yeah. right? In your so like. Little Nate, right? Younger Nate, if you could speak to him now about the relationship with God, like maybe coming to that conclusion earlier, what bit of advice would you give to him? That's a deep question. I know, I've asked a lot of people that question. I'm a deep guy, I can't help it. That's a deep question. I mean, do I have like three minutes to like, think on it? You or? can have three minutes if you yeah, want, minutes, but for them at home, it will be like two seconds. Just cut and back. Exactly. Um, I think it's... One thing is you're not you're not missing out. Life is more life is more exciting mm. on this side than the other side. Yeah. It sounds it sounds weird, isn't it? Like they don't you lot if you're not born again, you're not gonna get it. Yeah. Like you're just gonna think I'm just but yeah. it's it's different, isn't it? Like I mean I'm I just know like it's like again the song I said that man when they had what the boss I said um um when I got set back I never really watched face just kept moving. They always ask, you've been knocked again and again, how do you get through it? Can't lie, God's my anchor and he's the reason I really ain't on this losing. And it was like, that bar means a lot to me because even like one of my brethren, um, um, he's like, um, he plays like high level of rugby, Tom. And um, I remember he was just getting set back and set back and set back. Mm. So he was at uni um, and then he managed to break through and like get signed for professional rugby club. Mm. And then um, I think he done his shoulder and he was out and he was just set back, but he's he seen me getting set back. I was yeah. getting concussions, my shoulder, my pec, my knee, my ankle, concussions, like the whole works. And he's like, but I'm always posting on socials, being positive, excited. And he's like, bro, like, 
how how do you so positive? And I said to him, I said, bro, I said, the difference is obviously he's my, he's my friend, so I can talk to him. I said, bro, the difference between me and you or with anyone is when things go wrong in my life, I'm not scrambling to think how I'm gonna sort it out. Yeah. Like you're scrambling to think how you're gonna sort it out. Yeah. I know God's gonna God's got me. I just need to do my part. In the background, God's working, doing everything. Mm. So I can do the natural, God's gonna do the supernatural. So I think that's that's kind of one thing for me to cover and to understand that, you know what, like, I'm in God's hands. Yeah. And no matter what I go through, it doesn't matter because God's with me, he's gonna walk with me. The Bible yeah. says he'll never leave nor forsake me. Not to like, yeah. stop in that, like, some Bible like, yeah, quote. You can quote Bible things, yeah, it's fine. I usually tend to go on my phone and look and then quote the <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, so it's, I think, that's one thing I would say. It's like, don't feel like you're missing out. There's nothing you're missing out on. Yeah. If anything, it's, it's better on this side yeah. than to be on that side. And God's got a plan for everyone's life. And when you tap into what God wants to do in your life, yeah. it'll make your life easier because you'll start walking um, yeah. in what he's got you called for and yeah. then you'll see the freedom in that. Uh, yeah, totally. If I that mean, makes for sense. Me, no, I feel the same as well. Like, for me, I've only had life and life in all of its fullness, which is yeah. super cringy. If you watch it, you're like, that is cringy to life say. Life life. But like, my whole life is so yeah. much fuller in relationship with God. Oh, I thought you meant Every... you're, like, you're like a rich boy. Mate, I wish. <laughs> I wish I had that money. I was like, you know, I was trying to ask him. Like, yeah. No, I mean, like, my life is so much more fulfilling yeah. in relationship with God um, that it, it's overwhelming. Like, yeah. for me, the moment I became a Christian, I realised I got life. Mm. I was like, oh, this is what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that was it for me. Um, thank you so much for being here, mate. If that. you had, what socials, tell us all your socials, how we can find out more about 678 Nave. 678 Nave on Spotify, on Instagram, Twitter, the whole platform. Um, yeah, his and hers is out right now, guys. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, four track EP for Valentine's Day. It's endless. Nice. Love it, man. Yes, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, leave a cheeky comment down below, and also go check out 678 Nate, because he's the guy, loves having you with us, mate. Pleasure. Uh, peace, everybody.